Welcome to City This Week, I'm Mary Lee. It's good to have you with us. Coming up in this week's news, we head to Hualien, Taiwan and witness the reunion of bone marrow donors and their recipients. We take a look at Timo's work over the past 15 years and how it has helped countless patients in the most remote corners of the planet. And we meet 15-year-old Justin Amar from the Philippines, who is outgoing and bright despite his congenital diseases. As this year marks the 20th anniversary of the establishment of the Tsuji Stem Cell Center, an event was arranged on the day of the Mid-Autumn Festival in Hualien, Taiwan for 15 bone marrow donors to meet their recipients. One side expressed their deepest gratitude, while the other side agreed seeing recipients in good health are their greatest reward. Bone marrow recipient Feng Yongjian from China's Guangzhou shows his gratitude to his donor. Thanks to Ziji and the donor, they lighten up my life once again. I'm really grateful. Thank you, the second mother in my life. Over the past two decades, the Ziji Stem Cell Center has completed over 3,300 successful matches, with 1,381 in China and 1,177 in Taiwan, giving many a second chance at life and thus helping countless families. I am an art teacher, so I express my love through this drawing. Thank you for allowing me to have a family. Luo Guobing, who donated his bone marrow three years ago, says saving a life is really simple. It is just like donating your blood, which I have done so for over 200 times. I know a little about bone marrow donation, so I hope to correct the myths others have. Ling Yufang, who made a full recovery after her surgery, now seizes every giving opportunity to pay the love forward. Wherever there is a bone marrow donation event, I will participate. I want them to know it is such a meaningful thing to do. Behind every donor and recipient are stories of love and gratitude. In 1997, the Tsuji Stem Cell Center sent the first ever donation of peripheral blood stem cells to a patient in China, a move that was to set the stage for cooperations between Tsuji and China for more than two decades. In the wake of Tsuji's efforts, China's government decided to create its own donor registry, and thus, China Marrow Donor Program was born. <laughs> Today, these two stem cell donation organizations from either side of the strait are here together in cooperation and mutual respect. The China Marrow Donor Program and the Tsuji Stem Cell Center Data Registry have long been closed. We are like siblings. Exchanging experience, these two organizations, one from Taiwan, the other from China, share a close affinity. However, it was Taiwan's Tsuji that was the first to take a step in this area of healthcare. Tsuji's bone marrow registry is a database for the public good, used to help Chinese, Taiwanese, and Asians everywhere. The CMDP is a database supported by the government. Its budget is very large, and thus, they have been able to set up a bigger name registry. With China's vast population, the CMDP was quickly able to gather a large list of potential donors. We are not asking 1.3 billion people to be donors, but instead have tried to find people who understand and are willing to participate. In December of 2003, our registry reached 100,000 names. Now, 10 years later, that number has reached 1.5 million. Although the road has been difficult at times, it would have been more so without the pioneering work of the Tsuji Foundation. As I said, Tsuji is a model for us. When Tsuji first started carrying out stem cell donations, China did not have a database of its own. It was Tsuji that first brought hope to people by bringing bone marrow from Taiwan. 
台湾同胞的这个骨髓拿过来。We have almost 380,000 names in our registry. We also have a cold blood bank that can also help a lot of sick people. This is another area where we are a bit different. So this is also another thing that we have a difference with him. From bone marrow to peripheral blood to core blood, Tsuji has kept up with the times and technology. Its efforts over the past 20 years have not only brought hope to countless patients, but also spawned other similar organizations, thus allowing great love to spread one step further. Mr. Tian from Singapore was diagnosed with leukemia in 2010. Fortunately, in less than two months of his diagnosis, a match from the Tsuji Stem Cell Center donor registry was found. After undergoing a bone marrow transplant surgery, Mr. Tian has regained his health and now lives a life full of gratitude. This is my gratitude. Yes, I think you are very happy. Back then, I had lost hope. I didn't care if I survived or not. My family told me that I need to be strong and do a bone marrow transplant. I agreed, but I didn't have any hope that I would be able to find a suitable donor. The chemotherapy sessions were painful physically and mentally. I was very optimistic. I said to myself, it would be great if I could find a donor. If not, then so be it. I really want to know this stranger who saved my life. This person has a compassionate heart. My donor was a complete stranger. It was very kind of him to donate a part of his body so I can have a second chance at life. Before I underwent the bone marrow transplant, I would have never believed that someone could be this generous. I will never forget his kind gesture. Right now, I can do some exercise and walk my dog. Compared to last year, my health has improved greatly. This year marks the 15th anniversary of the Tsuji International Medical Association, also known as Tima. They are often seen in the most poverty-stricken areas, the most remote of villages, and even amidst times of adversity and disaster. Tima members hear the cries of the sick and poor and work to relieve their suffering and bring patients hope. An arduous journey across mountains and rivers, Typhoon Morakot left a trail of destruction in its wake. Yet nothing stands in the way of the Kaohsiung Tima team. Malaysia Riga, a village submerged underwater. Tima members put on life jackets and set out to the farthest corners. Argentina, they make their way across an unsteady bridge. Their final destination, villages where there are no doctors. Pakistan, the land jolted by an earthquake. Tima members walk across bumpy roads and climb the steep hills. We made our way into the mountains to visit disaster survivors and then back out again. My shoe broke. I put it together with tap. The road is long and weary. Mexico, dust sweeps across the land, patting the sand off their face, clearing the table of the dust. Patient smiles are once again as clear as day. Jordan, Bedouin children receive their first toothbrush. The two doctors are teaching these children how to brush their teeth. Yet darkness also follows. Typhoon Nagas brought destruction to Myanmar. 
In a tent without electricity, candlelight warms the heart of this little girl. Here in the Philippines, a short circuit is usual in a make-do surgery room. There will always be someone to provide light and a manual fan. In disaster's wake, although loneliness looms over Indonesia's Yogyakarta, there remains hope. A piece of cardboard becomes a splint, and a drip is hung on a banana tree. In Sichuan's Mianzhu, homes have collapsed, families are lost. A team of volunteers use a torn-off door plank as a stretcher and also a proper pope for this family. We must take him to the hospital. There's nothing we can do without a drip. Adversity is never an excuse. Language is never a problem. <laughs> Laughter gives the perfect answer. Haiti, Carol Sim has never been this happy, as he is finally free of 14 years of suffering. Now he can walk and he can run. Making the impossible possible. In the United States, dental equipment on the Free Mobile Dental Clinic has been modified over and over. Dentist Chen Xunman not only is a user, but also a reformer. First, second and third were eliminated because it's too complex. That's the biggest problem. If I were a volunteer doctor just starting out, I would still have to familiarize myself with the technicalities of the equipment. I could easily burn out. Senior doctor Hong Hong Dian has walked across every disaster site with two medical kits. One is for surgical use and the other is for general medicine. I have another kit which includes both. This way when we are in a disaster area, we just need to carry the two kit boxes to manage any disaster. Committed, they treat each patient as their own family. They travel far and wide as they cannot bear to see living beings suffer. Lu Xiaochun, the first team member in the Philippines, has stood firm to a commitment he made when he was 72. I've seen impoverished people in real need of assistance. Therefore, no matter my condition, if there's anything I can do, I will do it. Even if each step I take is a struggle, I have to get to them.
moving to Australia as part of their continuing assistance since a tropical cyclone hit Queensland in late January, Brisbane City volunteers carried out a fifth home visitation to Bundaberg City in September to survey the rebuilding progress of nine households. Upon seeing the volunteers once again, some residents returned their filled bamboo coin banks as a way to reciprocate City's love. <laughs> Donating her full bamboo coin bank to Tsuji volunteers is Judy. Now with Tsuji's continuous love and care, she no longer finds herself a care recipient, but has learned to give. But I'm just grateful. Like I might only be taking small steps, but I'm getting there. Like I'm moving forward. So it's like that you've made really good progress. Yeah. Considering last time, I think when we spoke, you sort of. You know, you had no idea where to start. No, I didn't know. It was just such a big hole that you didn't yeah. know how to start feeling. Yeah. But now that I think you've got all the plans, yeah. like how things are falling into places. This is the fifth time Brisbane City volunteers are in Bundaberg to care for these flood survivors. In months following the devastating floods, local residents have slowly returned their lives to normal. Well, I'm just going to go through and do one room up at a time. Yeah. For these, I suppose, to talk. Yeah. And saving up to yeah. do things. Slowly. <laughs> I was hard with the five kids. And yeah. Well, yeah. I had been crushing can. It is crushing can. From scrap. And collecting scrap metal to try and help us. You are? Yeah. Oh, right. You're Scrap, a good boy. Yeah. aluminium, copper pipe, copper wire, whatever. I'm to make right. ends meet, what, what Jennifer's what son also does his yeah. part to help out by collecting yeah. recyclables for money. Before they leave, city volunteers seize the opportunity to teach Jennifer some tips on saving money and encourage her to save extra to help more people like herself. Here at Linda Peterson's house, her eldest son, Aaron, has already returned their backyard to normal. In the wake of the disaster, Aaron shouldered the responsibility of looking after his siblings on his parents' behalf. This is your reward for all the hard work you've done. Yeah, it's great to see this place you can let you walk without having tiptoeing and yeah. Despite a long road to getting back on their feet, these local residents believe that with Tsuji volunteers' continuous care and assistance, a hopeful and prosperous future is just around the corner. Next, we go to the Philippines. Like most 15-year-old boys, Justin Amar looks forward to the future with optimism and curiosity. However, the young boy was born with Hallermann's Streif syndrome and hypopituitarism, which affects his height, eyesight, and among other things. Three years ago, Amar's vision stood at 21,000. However, it now stands at 20,300. Hearing of the trials of the young boy, Tsuji volunteers immediately donated a pair of new glasses that has opened up Amar's world once again. Standing only 88 centimeters tall and wearing Coke bottle glasses is 15-year-old Justin Amar of the Philippines. Although seated in the front row, Justin's vision has deteriorated to the point where even the largest words are a blur to him and has no choice but to climb up next to the blackboard to see what is written. Sometimes I will read him the notes on the blackboard, other times I will walk him to the bathroom. He is a very smart boy. There's no problem with his schoolwork. Unfortunately, his vision is poor, so he needs a magnifying glass in order to read. Although for Justin, every class is a struggle, his enthusiasm for learning remains firm. He says he hopes to become a scientist one day. Justin's problem is not his heart or mind, but his old glasses. After a recent checkup, it was discovered that his vision has deteriorated further from 21,000 to now 20, 2300, which explains why he was getting headaches and having trouble walking straight. He needed a new pair of glasses, that was the least we could do to help him out. Tima doctors were instrumental in giving Justin a new lease on life. With his new glasses, Justin's world has become clear once more, and now he can put his magnifying glass away. 
Before, when he would read, he would have to get extremely close to the blackboard or book to see what was written. Now he can see much better, and he is much happier as a result. Justin has never felt interior to his classmates despite his handicaps. In fact, his optimism is contagious for those that know him. Now with a new set of glasses, this optimism flows forth in his favorite activity, dancing. <laughs> Thank you so much for these glasses and the eye checkup. A hug and the love and gratitude behind it says it all. In Taiwan, the Taipei City Hospital organized a new staff orientation where city volunteers took them to help care recipients clean up their surroundings. At the conclusion of the event, the new recruits promised they will extend city's great love to their patients. New recruits of the Taipei City Hospital following city volunteers for steps to visit care recipients and help them clean up their homes. Working hand in hand, the medical staff and volunteers form a line to pass on used items and recyclables downstairs. Seeing how messy the care recipient's house is, we were shocked and didn't know where to start. Later, me and my co-workers worked together and quickly gave the house a new look. It is important that we volunteers help them clean up their home because first, they can enjoy a comfortable living environment and second, they will know they are not alone. Raising his kids along is care recipient Mr. Jiang, whose house has been ignored for many years. Thankfully, city volunteers are here to lend helping hands. In Taiwan, numerous people and families need our help. So I think after joining the city family, I will have more opportunities to help the less fortunate and give them a better life. City volunteers helped us clean up our home. Thank you. Thank you so much. Always putting on a smile is Mrs. Chen, who is a full-time caregiver for her youngest son. Thanks to City Volunteers Company, Mrs. Chen can find someone to talk to about her life's goods and bads. With City Volunteers Company in care, Mrs. Chen is able to share her frustrations with us. Mr. Zhou became unemployed after suffering from oral cancer. A dietitian among the medical staff takes the opportunity to offer him some health care tips. From today's event, we have learned that these care recipients, despite living in difficulty, still live their lives with optimism. The home visitations not only give these new medical staff a chance to see the less fortunate, but also inspires them to treat their future patients with a compassionate heart. At the end of the show, we turn our camera to China, where Suzhou City volunteers held a dumpling event to celebrate the Mid-Autumn Festival, while Xiamen City volunteers visited senior homes to make sure those away from their family during the holidays are not forgotten. We will leave you with these images. Thank you for watching. See you next week.